In this video, I'll cover the top 20 coins per market cap based on CoinGecko. I remove stable coins and Lido stake Ether and wrap Bitcoin BTC, all the others as per the list. Nobody's doing this, so I'm just going to go over them. Look in the timestamp if you want to skip and look only at the assets that you follow or that you're following. If not, watch the sequence from beginning to the end. This week, today is the 13th of April, 2024. The coins that we'll cover in order are the following. Leo Token, Uniswap, Near Protocol, Internet Computer, Litecoin, Polygon, Chainlink, Polkadot, Tron, Bitcoin Cash, Shiba Inu, Avalanche, Cardano, Toncoin, Dogecoin, XRP, Solana, BNB, Ethereum, and Bitcoin. I will cover them one by one. I'm going to cover the daily chart and the weekly chart. If you guys are interested in the four hour chart, I know that many people look at it. Put it in the comment. If I get enough comments, I'll add it next time. I'm planning to do this weekly and see if people like it or not. If not, I can do it bi-weekly. It will be based on the community and the interest and views that I see related to this longer video. It's going to take a while. I don't know how long it's going to be, but I'll go over these charts. Some of these charts I have not done at all, so I'll do them live. But after that, I think I should be able to have the previous drawings that I got from the previous week and then make modifications if we have to week by week. That way everybody sees what's going on. So the first one in line is Leo Token, ticker LEO. Let's start. This is the daily chart. So you have fairly slow slope here of growth and then an explosion in price post the level of 420. So let's draw the 420 here. This is the level of broke. Then I would say we can draw this trend line here like this. So this is the upwards trend line. Pretty much followed the MA50 here until the explosion in price. MA200 and MA50 have been going on increasing, except for this period which was, was quite flat. But now both of them are going up to the right. The momentum is good. Volume here, however, you need to look at it. It's sporadic. Sometimes there's volume, sometimes there's less volume. So it's not as consistently traded as other assets somehow. But we have some price action, so we need to look into it anyways. So here, now we have been correcting. So now the trend line is pretty much the MA50. That's what I would use right now. You can tighten it up a little bit. That's what I would follow. Suppose this breakout that required volume, you see it here. We got it. After that, diminishing volumes and we flatten in, we stop at 620. Like I said many times, sometimes it stops at even numbers. Not 623, not 621, 620. Why? It's like that. So now this is our resistance level. We are trading sideways since the 6th of March. And even though we have had a little bit of volume here, we it was more a corrected volume than a breakout volume. So now we're trading sideways and we're going to have support from the MA50 here. So we could use the trend line MA50 to try and challenge 620 again in the upcoming days. That's what it looks like. It's still quite bullish. We haven't broken supports. That's the daily for Leo token. I personally do not have this asset. So the weekly now. Somehow it coincides the 620 level here coincides with the previous peak here in 2022. So that's why we stopped there. 
We didn't have the perspective on the daily chart. We now have it on the weekly. Here around 350, we have quite good support. And we used it to start this strong upwards movement. From 2020, we have been increasing in value. We got the peak at 820, corrected to 350, traded sideways. But as you can see, the volume is quite on the low side, except in these regions here. So it's not as traded as many other assets. There does not seem to be any type of difference in volume now versus before. So this you have to keep in mind. But we're almost at technically all-time highest here for Leo token. If we break about 620 and clearly if we go beyond 650, we're on price discovery and we're going a lot higher. The MA50 and the MA200 are also going up. Very bullish, a lot of momentum. Have a look at Leo. That covers Leo. Now let's go and see Uniswap. This one, I do not have the trend lines either, so we'll draw them. So here we go. Uniswap, have two touch points here. So this is what we have right now. So this is the trend, initial trend line for Uniswap. And we had another trend line here with this breakout. You see it here. And that's the trend line of the MA50. So from left to right, MA50 is going up, MA200 is going up. So it's quite bullish. However, we have seen quite a big correction lately. So we got the initial breakout here on February 2024. We went as high as $17.12 or so. We corrected, we found support. Once we had that point, then we could have our trend line. Then we moved upwards and then we tested again that MA50 on the daily chart. We broke. That was the first signal that something was going on. And then as you can see here, we have a support level here. This is around 1060 or so. So when we broke, we touched it here. We bounced back. Then we corrected, we touched it again, bounce back. So that was a clear support level. Again, when we broke downwards, we touched it again, bounced back through the trend line here, but now this trend line was resistance. And then we broke that level. Once we broke that level, there was nothing here as support of a resistance, only this level here, which is what, 7, 785 or something like that. You draw the trend line here now you see it it was resistance here resistance here and now I found support and that's where we stopped so now the support is near the MA200 it's still upwards but we have corrected quite a bit is the downtrend completed for Uniswap in my opinion for now yes the momentum is still up probably will trade sideways here from this Support level and start going up. We're gonna have to give time the MA50 to come back below the price and then resume if we continue upwards for Uniswap. We have had quite a bit of volatility recently and this one gave on this critical support. So when we say if you have an asset that you have multiple touch points and when it clears the breaks it you usually need to take a decision and here it would have been adv advisable to be out especially because there was a big gap here of price and the price had to correct up to this level that's pretty much it but these this was the risk that you had to endure now it's more on accumulation phase if we break below this level below the ma200 in my opinion it's over for Uniswap. It's gonna go lower and it's probably going to be way behind the other altcoins in the bull run. Either something big happened in the project or people abandon ship somehow. I don't know what happened.
So this is the weekly for Uniswap. You see it here. This was the initial pump and then the correction. We are at support and it has been a long here since here that we have multiple touches. So it's quite a strong support. I would be surprised if we go below this at this stage, but unfortunately we have given quite a bit of profits, especially those ones that got in in this pump. If we respect this trend line, we're going to still go up and could, could, could still be back to the all-time highs. So it's going to take a little more buying from people supporting Uniswap. Let's see what happens with the asset. Next in line, Neo Protocol. So this is Neo Protocol. We have our touch points here. Initial trend line up, EMA 50 is going up, EMA 200 is going up, very bullish. We have another trend line here, an accelerating one like this. That's what we have right now. And we had another one here that we just broke. But this one was quite steep. So initial pump, we touched it here, touched it again, then found support in the MA50, didn't go back to the trend line, then found another support here on this new trend line so that allows us to draw this one then we accelerated then we have another touch here another touch here so that allows to draw this one but we broke this one this one has been rejected then it became resistance got rejected again then we started trading sideways and we found support here at six dollars or so we just have broken the six dollars and the MA50, so it's a little bearish, but we found support in this second trend line. So sometimes what's going to happen is that if the price action becomes very steep, it's going to give out, then it's going to either go right away to the MA50 or to the next trend line, found support there and see if it holds, and after that it resumes upwards, or if not, it breaks the MA50, breaks the second support, and then it goes back to the third support if we ever have one. And usually the third support, it's either a trend line or the MA200. That's usually the sequence. And that allows you a little bit of time to decide on what to do. In the bear market, if we ever get one eventually, that could be really significant profit taking on the way down. So you define your first, second, and third trend lines, and you say, well, I'm going to sell, I, I don't know, one third of my position every single time. So one third of my whole position, when it breaks the first one, then you take your position and you say, this is 100% now. A third of that, I'm gonna sell on the second support broken down, and then the last part, either the whole position, or the last third on the last support. So that, that could be an out strategy, but it's going to depend on what the chart shows you. So here, as we saw with, the, with Uniswap, we have a recent correction here. Bitcoin corrected quite a bit. There was a lot of liquidations. So this brought the price down. Is it healthy? Yes, most of the altcoins were in a exponential type of phase so now it kind of came back down and we are more in a reasonable uptrend instead of going almost vertical that's un unsustainable so you need somehow to either trade sideways or correct and that's what we have seen for many assets we'll cover most of them here so we'll see what the overall tendency is but now we almost touched this support level we came back, we're trading at $5.75 or so, $5.70. So now the MA50 is going to turn a little bit and probably 
take this trend line and the price action will still continue up. The AMA 200 is still going up. So it's still bullish, but it's a healthy correction for near. On the weekly, let's see. Yeah, on the weekly you see this normal phase, upwards position, this was almost vertical, so that's why we correct it. It's still steep. This one is still steep, quite steep actually. We'll see if we hold here and continue upwards or if we break down this one and we're going to use this one as an uptrend from now on. Just have a look. But the MA50 here is still bullish for near. So the momentum is good. It's just a healthy correction in my opinion. Next in line, Internet Computer ICP. ICP. Well, look at this. Seems to be a coincidence, but uh, somehow it isn't. Internet computer, ICP, the ticker. It had an initial exponential phase here, traded sideways, another push. Then we found support here on the ME50, support ME50, support, support, support throughout. We broke the support here, and then we somehow rebounded around $11 move up broke the ma50 and this point here allowed us to draw the trend line ma50 is going up ma200 is going up very bullish icp somehow it's going up to the right that's what we want so we had this very quick vertical explosion in price we stopped at 21 dollars were rejected came back Found support here around 17, with which touched here almost twice before. Broke it down. Then we tried to have some support in the MA50. Did not last. And now we have found support on the trend line, which is not a coincidence. And now we're going to trade around $14, $13.50, $14. We're going to see if we hold this position. If we break on the downside, the next support is around 950 but after as time goes by it's going to be probably be ten dollars or something like that and this would need to hold in order to keep the momentum up if it break below then it's over for icp i don't think it's going to happen but again another healthy correction on an uptrend you don't need to panic i think uh, most of the selling is done according to the chart right now but like i said many coins have been doing this lately if you cannot tolerate this type of volatility it's going to be very difficult for you to avoid buying selling multiple times in a few days or within a week i usually take my positions and if the trend lines hold you stay in the trade that's pretty much it on the weekly what do we have Boy, wow. This thing came from almost $3,000. Doesn't make any sense to do this. So we're going to remove this section completely. And we're going to start here at this level of 200 something. It's even quite high already. So we're going to go up, Let's see what happens. So this is what we have level of 240 we have just barely moved icp i don't know anything about the project but it's been a lagger it's been on an uptrend but some coins have moved quite closer to the previous highs than icp the trend line is up however volume is back from the bear market that we saw here so that's positive as long as we hold these trend lines, you still can make money on ICP, but you have to be tolerant 
of the corrections. Now, next in line, Litecoin. Okay, for Litecoin, we have our trend lines here. So we got resistance at 105, then we said resistance at 120. This trend line here just broke. So this is now becomes a resistance pretty much. The MA50 was on the way up. It's still on the way up, but we gave it away. So this support level of MA50, I think I said resistance, sorry. This support was broken, but we found support on the second trend line, like I just explained. So now it seems that we're going to trade in the $85 level. Like I said, we still have another support, which is the ME200. That's around 75. It's going to start creeping up. So it's going to, if we touch it here, it's going to be more near 80. So you could have like a $5 loss if you want to get to this level this could be another support level for litecoin but we have corrected quite a bit already now the ma50 is going to trend backwards and we're going to try and break above the ma50 again to resume the the upwards movement still bullish for litecoin but it has corrected recently so you see the the pattern is similar for most of the coins So this is the weekly chart. Again, we tried to break above the 105, did not work. The next one was 120, we didn't got near it. And now we found support here on this trend line, have it here. So we are at that level. And on the weekly, you see on top of that, that we have the MA50 weekly as support too. On the week, it actually touched it and bounced back. On the weekly, you have the support of the MA50. On the daily, you have the support of the trend line and the support of the MA200. Volume is back here for Litecoin, so it's still positive. Next in line, Polygon Matic. I'm not gonna edit too much the video so that you can see how I adjust and play with the charts. So you have an idea of what to do. Daily chart of Matic, Polygon, trend line, you see it here. This, so we're going, as it corrected, we're going to just focus on this one. So if you compare it for all the other coins that I have seen so far, we have seen so far, Matic is in the worst case. Why? ME50 was broken. The upwards trend line was broken and the ME200 on daily was broken. Already three strikes on Matic has corrected quite a bit from $1.30 and we're now at 75 cents, quite a big correction. And now we found support at 75 cents. So somehow we found support at 75 cents here but we're in a very, very weak position because if we give away this tiny support that we have here, we're probably going to back, going to 60 cents. If not, we're going back to 50 cents. And if we go below that, then already we are in big trouble. We could go as low as 50 cents if this trend line, if this trend does not stop. Matic has been dropping from the top 10, is out of the top 10, is now in the 15, 17 range or something like that. So quite a, a big drop in market cap. Therefore, I think many people are abandoning Matic for faster horses and it has impacted in the chart that we see here. So, so far, Matic is the worst one of the ones that we have seen so far. So this is the weekly chart, as I indicated, if we don't hold here, we're going back to 60. If not, 
50 and then 40 but 40 we're getting back to prices of 2021 and if not it's going near zero so you don't want that to happen hopefully Matic will react kind of broke the MA50 on the weekly also so that's not necessarily good but the price can trade sideways here and allow the MA50 to become real support and push it upwards we have broken the MA200 on the weekly and that's not great that's a bearish type of response so be careful with Matic because it is at a critical stage right now next in line chain link So, trend lines for Chainlink. This is what we have on the daily chart. Big support at $17. Big support at $12. Trend line here going this way. ME50 here and ME200. So now, the ME50 was broken. Then we tried to have support here on this trend line, was broken. Then we found support on the $17 support here, but it recently broke. As soon as it broke, then we had nothing for support, only the ME200 and the $12 support here. We stopped at the ME200, and now we're trading near the ME200. So we need to hold this level for link. It's $15. It's a big correction already. We're going to probably trade sideways, like I mentioned, give time the MA50 to come back down. It's going to take a while and then resume the upwards movement. The MA200 is still on its way up to the right, so it's still bullish, but we have corrected quite a bit for Chainlink. It's still a very important part of the crypto world as an oracle, so as part of the infrastructure of crypto, it is critical. It has competition now with the newer assets from Solana, but Chainlink, it's still a big player, an important player. And as you saw from the, all the charts that we have seen so far, many have corrected, most of them have corrected. So they're following the market pretty much. And the market is Bitcoin as the big influence. So the correction affected most of the project or almost all of the projects. Therefore, not necessarily linked to the project itself. It's more of the market, and you need to tolerate those swings. So for Chainlink, we had that trend line that I indicated. We broke it, found support on the MA200. It somehow works that the ME200 on the weekly and the ME200 on the daily coincide somehow. It's not usually the case, but that is important. So that support is critical. We have another support like indicated at $12 or so. And the ME50 of the weekly chart is at $12 going higher. So we're going to have a golden cross very soon of the ME50 breaking the ME200 so that could be quite bullish to move upwards for Chainlink. The halving is coming so there's many things that could change the perspective here. There's a lot of uh, liquidations related to people who are using leverage. You may end up with bigger candles than we used to have basically because there's a lot of people anticipating what the market will do and many people get liquidated on the way up or on the way down. So this could go both ways. But on the weekly, it looks even better for Chainlink than the daily chart. Just be patient. I don't think it has changed that much. The project itself is still quite important. So just be patient. I know the red days and 15% and 20% corrections uh, are not fun to see in your portfolio, but that's crypto. Next in line, Polkadot.
Well, polka dot looks exactly like a chain link, pretty much. So this is the trend line. We broke the MA50, tried to find support on the trend line, broke the trend line, and then the next one was the MA200. We are the MA200, we bounced a little bit. Same thing, the uptrend is still there. Quite a big correction affecting all assets, including polka dot. You just have to tolerate these swings. I never trade uh, with leverage, therefore I never get liquidated. I always buy spot. So these big swings do not affect me. It affects my portfolio because it's on the way down, but I do not lose my coins and my whole investment. Therefore I can decide to get in and buy cheap coins at this price or not, or just hold my position. I have that luxury, but that's why I never trade with leverage. I'm not good enough to be in that position and i think it's a for me it's too risky that i lose my coins so i rather hold the coins and look the market six months down the road to see what happens that's usually my perspective i'm not a day trader that much i like to control my coins and therefore if there's big swings like that in price i want to really be in control of them and decide if I sell or not and at what point based on what's going on and not due to leverage so that's my position on that if you want to play with leverage you can but it's not the case for me and as with chain link polka dot is the same thing it broke this trend line, found support on the MA50, on the weekly MA50, I think, sorry, I think the uh, trend link was the MA200. In this case, is the MA50. We seem to have stopped there, this correction. Hopefully, we'll bounce back. If we give away this weekly support, then we're going back to $4, in my opinion, for chain link, which is a big, big drop. Hopefully, we bounce back, have an eye on your asset, but, at this stage, it's at support. Next in line, Tron, TRX. This is what the daily chart of Tron looks like. So again, trend line and support levels. We seem to have a resistance here at 11 cents and a half. We broke it. We went as high as almost 14 cents and a half. Then we corrected, broke the MA50, then even quickly corrected below that support line. Somehow we bounced back right away and regain this was a fake out here the 11 cents and a half held Tra we traded sideways but eventually we broke on the downside of this trend line and now we came back again near this support the ma200 on the daily chart is approaching that 11 cents and a half so that's the current support for tron if we give away this support we're going back to 11 and then after that it's going to be 10 cents and a half 10 cents and then lower it has quite a few supports on the way down but somehow tron looks a little bit stronger than the other assets it has corrected i guess a little less than the others based on the structures it had it's near support so that support has held the only one that gave was the ma50 and the trend line so we have still a support and the ME200 on the daily chart. So this is the weekly from Tron. So this 14 cents resistance, it's near what happened here on April 2021. So we got rejected here. So this is pretty much a healthy correction. We are here at 11 cents and a half 
And on the weekly, we still have two big supports of the MA50 and the MA200. The MA50 is almost at, at 10 cents and it's going to continue to go up week by week. So there's a big possibility that the current support will hold for Tron. The next coin is BCH, Bitcoin Cash. For this one, I have already trend lines, so it's going to help. Well, not trend lines, but supports and resistance levels. We're going to draw the trend line here. One trend line here and the second one right here. We were in an uptrend, quite a big push for Bitcoin Cash. We touched 720 and got rejected. Then we gave away the first trend line here that did not hold. It's kind of normal because there's not a lot of price action on that region. Therefore, there's not a lot of volume of people buying and selling that could ha hold the price. So we give away, gave away the trend line and then we found support here at $520 or so. We even touched the MA50 on the daily and bounced back. MA50 is still up, MA200 is still up. Quite bullish for Bitcoin Cash because of its price action. So this is a healthy correction in my opinion for this asset. We're gonna probably trade sideways here, wait until the MA50 comes in and then resume upwards. That's what I expect for Bitcoin Cash. Quite a strong chart on the daily. So on the weekly, pretty much the same thing. This 700 level seems to be quite critical uh, and it's gonna give a lot of resistance to break it. But beyond that, it's going to be easier and the price will resume with probably explosive price action. Right now, we're just on a healthy correction for Bitcoin Cash. Let's have a look at Shiba Inu. So Shiba has a different, a different type of chart from the others. This was the trend line and we seem to have a support at this level right now. Okay, so this is the structure for Shiba Inu. Big vertical explosion in price, then a correction. Somehow we found support here at 2,500. We touched it multiple times here, bounced back, and that allows us to draw this trend line that held up to this point, it broke here. And then the next supports you had two, you had the MA50 on the daily chart and that 2450 level. Found support a little bit on the ME50 and it broke. And now we are at 2450 as a support. The ME200, it has a lot of catching up to do. It, it now, it is at 1335, so quite a big gap. So if the price goes clearly below this, we're going to correct hard to at least 1500, in my opinion, or near that MA200 because there's nothing here preventing it from going down quite a bit. So let's hope that Shiba will help and will be in this price range, 2500, for the next couple of days and resume upwards if Bitcoin moves upwards. So this is the weekly chart, historical chart. Now we see that we are at support. We need to hold this. And even on the weekly, the, you know, here it's 1100. The MA50 weekly is currently at 1100 and the price is at 2450. So if it breaks below, we're going down quite a bit for Shiba. So keep that in mind. If you are a holder of Shiba, I am a holder of Shiba, but I'm keeping it for a long term, so even if it corrects, I would probably do not won't take any actions regarding Shiba. We'll probably I'll probably accumulate on the low side here.
for another push because I think it's going higher long term. That's my guess. AVAX Avalanche. Okay. Let's see trend line for Avalanche. Like this. So Avalanche is similar to a few coins here that we have seen. So upwards movement, we broke here on the upside. We didn't continue up to the right. We corrected right away to the support here at $48. Found support on the trend line, but also on the MA50 on the daily chart. Gave it away, came back again, gave it a second time, and now we found support on this huge trend line that we have. And as soon as we gave it away, as you see it here, we dropped to the next support. And it seems to be here. So now we are at this level of support, which is $38 near the ME200. The ME200 is at 32. It's going to continue to go up. But we are at the critical stage for AVAX. If we break this level, we're going back to 32. And if we break this 32 level, then we're going a lot, a lot lower. So we are on a critical stage for AVAX. But again, it has corrected quite a bit already. So is it enough to consolidate a little bit, find momentum, and then resume upwards? It could be a healthy move for AVAX. Avalanche. On the weekly, we see it here again that we are at support. And after that, the next support is $30. And after that is the MA50 on the weekly, which is at $24 right now. So these are the next supports for Avalanche on the way down. But most probably it's going to stay at this level and trade sideways from now on. Now, one of the popular coins out there, ADA. Let's have a look at ADA. Okay, so we have this uptrend for ADA, and then we kind of formed this wedge, found support on the trend line twice, then broke to the upside, so that structure was bullish, price action was bullish, and we move upwards, up to a level of 80 cents, which is now the level, the highest level of resistance. Got rejected, came back down, booked the MA50, found support again on this trend line, traded near the MA50, and then we gave it away. As we gave it away, we found support around 55 cents here, came back to the trend line, but now it becomes resistance, got rejected, and now we're back to the lower level, which is 50 cents. So for ADA, right now it's 5 cents increments to find support 55 50 45 40 35 those were are the next levels but again it's not a coincidence it stopped at 50 cents but it also stops at the level of the ma 200 on the daily chart so again i think it's going to stop there trade sideways and resume afterwards it's an asset that is quite popular and is traded quite a bit by many people so that's why you see clear action points every five cents for cardano the big picture for cardano we started the upwards movement now we see here that we got a big resistance of the me 200 weekly we got rejected now we're finding support on the ME50 of the weekly chart. I hope I said ME200 here as resistance. ME50 now is support. It's going to potentially go upwards. If it does, and if we bounce back from here, we're going to have a golden cross eventually on the ME200. That could be very bullish for Cardano. And that could be the signal that we're really starting the bull market for Cardano this time. It may or may not happen, but that's what it's looked like because we allowed the MA50 on the weekly chart 
to go below the asset, go below the price action, and now use it as support for the next movement upwards. But we need volume and we need more buyers than sellers at this stage for Cardano. Toncoin, let's have a look at Toncoin. It's a coin that has been formed extremely well, extremely well recently. So two trend lines. This was the initial trend line with these two points and then the accelerated trend line for Toncoin. Toncoin right now is one of the strongest charts I've seen so far. Why? Because even the accelerated trend line has still performed as a support for price action. We found support here, we broke above it, we traded up to 750, who now is the big resistance. We correct it, but we bounced back out of the trend line and came back up, and we're a little far from the trend line right now. So we not we haven't even broken the first trend line, then we have the MA50, then we have the second trend line, then we have support here, then we have the MA200. So there's a lot of supports waiting for the price for ton therefore this is one of the strongest one we have seen so far structure wise price wise ton is pretty pretty solid right now if you plan to get in the asset it's still tricky either you decide to uh, get in near this trend line or near the ma50 when it touches it as a next entry point but that's future and if it corrects at all so keep an eye on ton on the weekly okay that's why you remember that but ton coin is one of the strongest coins right now it's in price discovery therefore it may behave a little different than the other coins and we have seen so far that is is strong a lot of people who are in the coins are not panicking it doesn't seem to be and a lot of sellers, therefore, it's holding its price right now. Very, very bullish still for Toncoin. One of my favorite meme coins, Doge, right now. Fairly simple. We have this trend line that is followed by the MA50 and we are at support right now. We broke this support at 18 cents. Now we are, we have the support at 16 cents and a half of the MA50. The trend line is a little lower, 16 cents or so, but we're trading sideways right now and we're holding. So either a very nice entry point, we could even correct to 16 cents in my opinion, but most of the coins have corrected a lot more than Dogecoin. Therefore, you think that Dogecoin is a little stronger than the other assets. Weekly for Doge, we still have this big trend line that has held. So therefore, extremely bullish. If we continue and resume, we're going higher. Plain and simple. XRP XRP oh boy okay well XRP it's quite different from the other assets you see here that it's a lot more difficult to draw trend lines for XRP we may see something on the weekly so this is a support level. We have a resistance at this level, 74 cents. This is 48 cents. If we had a trend line, that would be this one that we have recently broken. MA50 on the daily was broken. MA200 on the daily was broken. Now we found support at 54 cents. Somehow, as you see it here, it has touched this level quite a few times. So because it has stopped here, or you tested here, or rejected here, rejected here, you use it as support. We are a very critical level here. 
from there, if we correct down, we're going to 48, in my opinion. If we don't held here, we're going to 46, as it was the level here. If not, we go to 42 cents. But what you notice about XRP is the MA50 and MA200 do not seem to be going up and to the right that much. They're pretty much trading sideways. And most of the altcoins are already up to the right. So that's not good for XRP, meaning that we're just staying at the same level. We always want to be on fast horses or second level of coins that are moving higher. Coins that are obviously going down, we don't want to be in them. And coins that are going sideways, we don't want to be in them either, especially if most of them are moving upwards and if 10 coins are moving and one is trading sideways nobody wants to be in the one that is trading sideways and nobody wants to be in the one that is going downward this could be a possibility or a situation for xrp let's look at the weekly i'm gonna just confirm this and we'll see what's going on whoops okay so you see it here we even have another support level uh, resistance level here okay so you see it here on the weekly the MA50 and the MA200 are barely going up so it means that the upwards momentum is low if you want to compare when the coin was going up like this this is very positive but then this is positive momentum therefore you see price action unless we see the type of sh changing shape of the MA50, we're gonna probably stay in the same range here for a while. Obviously, 80 cents is the big resistance right now, and after that, we have one dollar. But even if we get a one dollar, we are still 60 cents from the all time high, so we're still quite a ways to go. We need a big change in momentum for XRP in order to accelerate the push upwards. If not, it could be a coin that is going to be in this 60 to 80 cents for the next year or so. I'm not predicting that it's going to happen, but there does not seem to be a lot of momentum for XRP at this stage. It's not correcting a lot, but it's not moving a lot higher either. So very little volatility, very little momentum. That equals to what? Stay still. Now, one of my favorite coins of this bull run, Solana. Okay, so this is the daily chart. So you see that this is different from XRP already. Main trend line, I'm gonna continue drawing it here. Okay, right here. Accelerating trend line here, like I indicated, we broke it, and now we find support at the next trend line or the next MA, in this case, MA50. Didn't really well, find a little support here, bounce, and then we broke down, so it didn't hold. Now we're at $150, an even number. We almost touched 140 here with a wick and came back. So now it's going to be $10 increments of support for Solana. The positive thing is that we have this trend line at $130 right now. So we could correct here and resume upwards movement. The MA50 is still going up. ME200 is still going up to the right. So the momentum is still there for the asset. It's a healthy correction in my opinion. A lot of activity on the Solana blockchain. And like most of the coin, it has corrected and it has momentum. So tolerate the volatility. That's my only option at this stage. And the weekly, Compared to XRP, Solana is much closer to all-time highs than XRP. Therefore, a faster horse and it has quite a lot of momentum. So you see here that the MA50 is really going up to the right right now. Even this correction will not change much about that. If we hold this trend line, we could use it to get to $300 and beyond all-time highs, in my opinion. So very, very bullish. And if not, the next support is going to eventually be the MA50. 
going upwards. So very, very bullish for Solana. If people wanted to get in at lower prices, cheap prices, around 150 and near one, between 135 and 150 could be really good price entries for Solana for those who are interested. Three to go. BNB, Binance Coin. What's going on with Binance Coin? Number one, trend line number two. So quite bullish, back, even though there was a lot of negative news and anything, uh, all things related to the CEO and the scrutiny of Binance and things like that, the coin is performing quite well. It has momentum. MA50, MA200 going up to the right on the daily chart. We seem to have a resistance at 640 and on the weekly maybe at 680. We're trading sideways between 640 and 520 so far. And now the MA50 is joining this trend line as support. We have not corrected that much. We have traded sideways on this really red markets. It means that if the coin does not correct much, it's a stronger asset at this stage. We have the MA50 and this trend line as support. After that, it's going to have this trend line. By my opinion, the MA200 will catch up. So you could have the MA200 as another support level for Binance, anywhere it gets near this trend line could be a nice entry point for Binance if you like this coin. I do not personally have it, but the bullish momentum is there for the coin. So the 680 level was the all-time high. There's a lot of places here where you can actually put that trend line, so between 665 680 and you could even say 700 is the top. So we're near all-time high for BNB, a little bit like Solana. So that gives you an idea of how strong the asset is. We have not broken this trend line on the downside. That's very positive. And the MA50 is bouncing out of the MA200 here. And it's gonna move away from MA200 and up to the right. So momentum for BNB has shifted it was a little on the downside and flat for the MA50 but now it's up the MA200 has always been up since well here since August of 2021 a while back so very bullish for BNB number two ETH Ethereum what is going on with Ethereum? Trend line. Okay. So that's what we have for Ethereum. Initial trend line upwards here. Accelerated trend line here that we broke on the way down. Found support on the MA50 on the daily chart, bounced, found support again, broke, somehow came back over it, but now it gave it up again. Now we seem to have some kind of support here around $3,200. The real support is at $3,000. MA200 is still up to the right and this trend line is still valid. So we are trading, we are trading sideways right now between 3200 and 3800 we could be trading sideways now the ma50 will come back down if it comes back below the price it's gonna help it move upwards but the next resistance is at four thousand dollars and four thousand dollars one hundred we're trading still up to the right so still bullish for ethereum On the weekly, a little bit like 
Bitcoin, we're near all time high, which is here 4,800, something like that. So it's one of the strongest assets that we have right now. It gave away this steep trend line. Now it's going to find support and most probably will follow this second trend line all the way to 4,000 and eventually I guess 5,000 for all time high. So we will see how it goes, but quite positive and bullish for Ethereum. And let's finish this overview of the top 20 assets per market cap with Bitcoin. Bitcoin quite similar to Ethereum. We have initial trend line here. This one, I don't know what happened here. This should be, no, probably it's going to be more of a weekly type of thing. Let's see. Let's draw this. Okay. So we have this trend line right here. So this trend, trend line seems to be on the weekly or earlier trend line. Second one a little steeper and this third one a little steeper for Bitcoin. Support at this level of $65,000. We are there right now. ME50 is right there. Support is there. We are also near this trend line. Are we going to hold this trend line? Bounce up and continue upwards. That would be really great. Because if not, we're going to find this trend line as the next push up. It would, be, it would be better if we used that MA50 here to go up. MA50 is going up, MA200 is going up. We have the support level to stop the drop from Bitcoin. So very bullish, extremely bullish for Bitcoin. We are a week away from the halving. So expect big things from Bitcoin the big monster who is Bitcoin. And you see it here, support here 65,000 was the previous high. So now we're, we broke above it and now we seem to be doing the retest, which is one of the bullish type of movements in TA. So once you break a resistance level and it becomes support and then you bounce back above it this could be like a trampoline it's going to explode in price very quickly after that so we hope to see that with bitcoin you see the volume we got here on this region we are way lower on volume right now if somehow we get this type of volume in the next week or a couple of weeks we could explode in price and because of the having everything is pretty much aligned for it. Top of that, we have a golden cross here that happened at the beginning of the year that allow us to have this push already, but it's fairly recent in a weekly chart. You see that barely the MA50 is moving away from the MA200. Therefore, the momentum of Bitcoin to go higher is quite immense. The ETFs are grabbing every coin available. We are in a deficit just on them related to the amount created by the miners. Miners are selling less and less coins. Anyone who wants to buy them. Some companies are even contacting directly miners to get their coins and more and more they are saying no. No access to coin there. The OTC desks at Coinbase or other centralized exchanges are on the low side. So eventually the coins are going to come from the actual holders of coins. Right now, the only way to get coins is with liquidations on the way down or on, on the way up. So that's why we have seen quite a bit of wicks up and down in the price of Bitcoin. That gathers a lot of coins and that allows it to be redistributed to the ETFs. Many ETFs are going to start trading next week from Asia, Hong Kong, 
and that is linked to China. There's Australia and Brazil that have ETFs that are launching also. Many retail investors are going to jump in also in the buying of coins, but there really is not a lot of coins available to be sold. I am not selling one of the coins that I have or the Satoshis that I have. I'm buying periodically every week, a little bit here, a little bit here of Bitcoin. I'm accumulating as many Satoshis as I can, but I will not sell coins. Even on the future bear market, I'm not selling a single Satoshi for a very long time. I'm expecting five years, 10 years before I sell my coin. So from me, nobody is going to get Satoshis for the next 10 years. That's, I have decided to do that. So keep in mind, however, that when they say that BlackRock is buying all these coins, okay, you have to discern and differentiate what BlackRock is. So BlackRock, the company, can buy Bitcoins for the company. That's okay. So that those coins are the property of BlackRock. People who buy shares of iBit, who is the vehicle, the ETF, that people can use to buy shares. And if you buy, let's say, $1,000 of iBit, the equivalent amount of money, $1,000, BlackRock will have to buy an equivalent amount of Bitcoin to match the amount that you invested. Therefore, the owner of those coins is not BlackRock, it's you. As long as you keep your shares, BlackRock cannot get rid of that Bitcoin. So when they say, oh, BlackRock bought 5,000 Bitcoins, today or 4,000 Bitcoins today or 400 millions of dollars of Bitcoin today, well, they're divided by the amount of people, institutions who buy the shares. Only a fraction of them are actually bought by BlackRock, the company. So there's a lot of decentralization in there. BlackRock cannot decide to dump all their coins and sell them at the same time. Because in order to sell the coins that are held by individuals, BlackRock will have to contact them and tell them, you should sell your coins. And that person still has the option to say, no, I'm not selling my shares, therefore you keep the Bitcoin. So everybody who's afraid of BlackRock gaining power related to the network, related to the amount of coins that they possess, yes, they possess quite a bit of coins, but all its investors, the owners of iBit, the majority of them own the majority of the coins linked to the ETF. And that applies to all ETFs. So there's a way of decentralization in that way that many people have access to the shares and therefore to variable amounts of Bitcoin. You need to be aware of that. It's not that BlackRock will own the whole thing. It's not true. So what's going on? In a week, there's the halving. So we're going to drop from 900 coins per day minted to 450 minted. The demand, it's going to stay the same or increase. Therefore, we lose 50% of the supply on the daily basis. And the miners are not selling 100% of those coins. So if 450 coins are minted at only 50 coins are up for sale, 400 are not available. Therefore, the demand is going to be extremely higher than the supply past the 19th of the 20th of April of 2024. And this is going to be reflected in the price. There's no other way around it. And because there's not a lot of coins available on OTC and available by Coinbase and all the other suppliers of centralized exchanges, the only way to buy these coins are going to be from the market. And if the market decides that they're selling Bitcoin at $80,000, $90,000, or $100,000, 
that's going to be the price that BlackRock and the other ETFs will have to pay for the coins. Because once an individual buys $1,000 of shares of IBIT or all the other ETFs, the ETF company is obliged to buy Bitcoin within three days maximum. So they have to. If they cannot find cheap Bitcoin to buy, there's, that's their problem. They need to buy it from whoever is going to sell it at whatever price. And if this price starts to take off quickly, it's going to take the price high extremely quickly. That's why you need to be in the market right now. Bitcoin could explode in price in any time. And if you see a jump from $70,000 to $100,000 in a matter of a couple of days, people are going to panic and start buying IBIT shares and all the ETFs at an alarming rate that could really provoke an avalanche of demand for the tokens, for Satoshis, and therefore it could be explosive for the price. Nobody knows what's going to happen and there's no more created. We are stuck with whatever the protocol is giving us as the amount of Bitcoin and Satoshis in circulation. Every day somebody loses coins. So we have less and less available. And like I indicated, I'm not selling one Satoshi to anybody. And I'm not leveraged, therefore, there's no way that I lose my coins. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a long video, it's a long process, but my conviction on Bitcoin is quite strong. I hope you guys got to the end of the video. It's a pretty long one. Use the list of coins, the timestamps in the description to jump for the assets that you want to cover. I'll do this on a weekly basis and hope that people enjoy it. Let me know if you like it. If you enjoy this format, I will continue to do that for as long as people enjoy it. If you got to this, to the end of this video, just type go Bitcoin to see who actually got to this level. And thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. See you next week. For this type of format, I will be posting individual charts and videos as I have been for a while. But I'm going to try to have a summary here so that people have an access to the coins that they want especially the big ones. Disruption continues. Explosion is about to happen for Bitcoin. Enjoy the ride, everybody.